Thank you. Hallelujah. Just remain standing. Father in heaven, we come again before you in the name of Jesus, Lord, thanking you yet for another day. Another day, God, that we have an opportunity to obey you, to accept your word and live. Another day, Lord, to flee unrighteousness, Lord, and seek after you. Lord, now as we bring your word, Lord, touch those, Lord, and open up their spiritual eyes, their spiritual mind, and their spiritual hearts to understand. We ask this in Jesus' name. Let every heart say, thank God. Thank God. And amen. 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 You may have your seats. Amen. Thank God for those that have made it out, and thank God as we do every week for those of you who are uh, on uh, Facebook that are viewing us today. Amen. You took out the, oppor the time and the opportunity and give this old fellow another opportunity to bring you with us, saith the Lord. Amen. We also want to thank in advance those who have subscribed to us on YouTube. And as we do every week, once we're completed with the message here, we will immediately load it up so that you can uh, get this uh, word of God there on YouTube. Amen. Amen. Today's message is going to be a continuation of last week. Amen. And before we, uh, some of you who have, maybe this is your first time uh, tuning in to us here at Way of Life Ministries, we are located here at 2557 North 74th Street here in Wauwatosa. Amen. We uh, just come see us. We don't, we don't have no get rich quick scheme. So, I mean, if that's what you're looking for, we, we don't have that here. Uh, you might want to check some of them other places out there that's uh, screaming that we got the goods for you. All I got for you is the unadulterated word of God. And I would beg you just to uh, give it a chance. Why don't you taste and see that the Lord is good? Amen. We can't make you no promises. All we can uh, give to you is that what Jesus gave to us, a chance at life everlasting. Will you give him a try today? Those of you that are tuned in, uh, do yourself and me a favor. Amen. Uh, as we do every Sunday, we ask you to uh, get out your Bible. Amen. Some of you may have them, them, them fancy Bibles with all the red letters. And you know when Jesus is speaking and some of you uh, just have all the black letters there. Amen. And if that's what you got, that's fine. Uh, when Jesus is speaking, I'm going to let you know. Uh, there's another thing I'm going to do, or rather not going to do. I'm not going to change God's word. Uh, that's why we ask you every week to get the book, to get the doctrine, and follow along. We don't want to lead anybody astray. Amen. If I change one tittle, uh huh. if I change anything in God's word, uh, let me show you where I'm going to end up. Right here in the pit. Uh, speaking of the pit, let me just tell uh, you that uh, this is your first time. Let me do my little, my little house cleaning here. And then we, uh, DJ and I usually, uh, he'll remind me I got to get to the death clock. Amen. Uh, friends, when Pastor Harmon uh, speaks of the pit, uh, this is what I'm talking about. Come on over here. Uh, this area here, I often refer to it as the pit. Amen. This is the pit of hell. Those that have died apart from my Lord and Savior, uh -huh, when they leave this life and they do not know him. Amen. I mean have a relationship with him. I mean that he knows you. I'm not talking about you all that just heard of him. Uh huh. Uh, let me show you where them folks at. They're right here in the pit. Uh, never to walk this earth again. Never to talk to me, you, or nobody else. Amen. 
I am God's traffic cop this morning. Uh, he has a lot of traffic cops. I'm just one of them. There's nothing uh, special about me. Uh, I'm overweight. I don't look too good. And, and I, I'm gray-headed. And, and there's nothing uh, that you may like about me. My voice don't sound too good. And all I do is cry loud and spare not. Uh, but God looked down on me and said he could use me. Mm -hmm. uh, he said he could use me, and, and here I am. And he said he had a position for me as a spiritual traffic cop. Oh, it's not a prestigious job to most. Uh huh. All you're doing is there directing folks and all these things. But you know, it's a difference, my friend. Uh, I'm directing souls. And God gave me some spiritual tools that's in the book. That's in the doctrine to use, to help, to guide you to life everlasting. Amen. Uh, we're going to go to the death clock. These are horrible numbers that I hate to have to repeat to anyone. Amen. The message that you're going to get today uh, I didn't sit down with Sister Harmon here and write it out. In fact, I didn't write anything out. Amen. I don't write out a message. Whatever God give me out the book, out the doctrine is what you're going to get. Amen. That's why I don't change it. But uh, Sister Harmon there, that's my wife. And then March 7th of this year, it'll be 30 years I've been married to Sister Harmon. Amen. Uh don't you think I'm going to get up here and lie to you and tell you all those 30 years has been good? They haven't. Amen. But you know what? We still stuck together like crazy glue. Amen. I'm stuck with her. She's stuck with me. And we make it work. Marriage is work. That's what it is. But we don't sit down and work on a message. Rochelle doesn't tell me how to preach. She don't tell me if I should stand over there closer to the pit or if I should stand over here where the saints of God are going to be. We don't discuss that. Amen. I get all of my directions. All of my orders come from the boss. He is my Lord and Savior. I work for him. Amen. I'm not here to, to, to see how much money I can get out of you. Your money perish with you. God takes care of this ministry. There's a lot of little ministries like this one here that God is still providing for. Thank you, Lord. For keeping us with our head above water. Amen. We ain't got uh, heaven on earth here. Mm-mm. We waiting to get to heaven. I don't want the invitation. I want to get there to that mansion that Jesus says he has for me. Hallelujah. The death clock. As I stated, these are horrible numbers that uh, I hate to give. But it is a reality. In fact, let me offer the, my condolences to, there was a, uh, a person who was riding their bike, I believe it was earlier this morning, and they were struck by a vehicle, and uh, they lost their life there, and the perpetrator fleed, amen. Uh, sir, if that is you, turn yourself in, do the right thing, and if there's anybody out there that know this person, turn them in. Mm-hmm. God saw you, and he will forgive you, sir. But listen, uh, uh, folks, uh, that person who have gone on, I don't know nothing about them. I don't know who, who it is. I don't know their lifestyle. But I do know this, that anybody that leaves this life, if you know him and he knows you, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I hope so much that that fella is present with the Lord. Because if he's not, or anyone for that matter, that have passed on without him, need I say any more? Amen. The death clock. Uh, I typically just give you the death clock for the United States, and that's what I'm going to do today. But there is a worldwide death clock. But as of midnight, January 26, the death clock sits at 3,000, 
523 souls. Now, these are reported deaths, my friend. These are people who have been reported, who have been found. But I often tell you, uh, there are bodies that are in some home. Maybe it's frozen. Or uh, maybe it's burned up. Uh, maybe there are some bodies down there in the river or uh, next to the creek there that have not been discovered. But let me tell you, my friend, all those that have not been discovered, they're in one of two places. They're, uh, they're present with the Lord or they're in the pit. These are numbers none of us want to hear. Let me, before we get to the message, let me just, uh, everybody learns a little differently. Everybody understands a little differently. Uh, the hardened criminal uh, may understand things different from uh, the Wall Street guy. So let me give you two little scenarios here. Uh, and all will give you uh, what we mean about the pit here. Uh, the pit is much like a holding tank. Uh-huh. Because after you leave the pit, uh-huh, you have to go stand before the judge. Now, uh, those of you, uh, you the real sedated folks and the real educated folks, you know about going to the dental office. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the dental office, there is what they call or we call a waiting room, a waiting area. Area And sometimes there is some magazines there and maybe there's some breath mints there at the dentist's office. Mm -hmm. and, and so you have some things there to occupy your time for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even with that, sometimes we get a little impatient. And you go up there and you ask the clerk, uh, well, how long is it going to be? He is in there, isn't he? Mm -hmm. So you get the picture. And then uh, once they call your name, uh, uh, Mr. Educated Man, it's your turn. You, you can come on see the dentist. Uh huh. So he can look on in there and down your esophagus and check things out for you. So you move from the waiting area in there into the operating room, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That's for your educated folks. Uh, now, us regular folks, uh huh. Yes, uh, I'm regular folk. Mm hmm. And I just like being a regular person. Amen. And some of the regular folks is way down there in the gutter, and sometimes you got to explain things to them a little differently. Uh, so uh, let me tell you there, uh, you may not go to the dentist's office, mm -hmm. uh, but you have visited the old jailhouse, haven't you? Mm -hmm. And so when you go, to, when the police arrest you off the street, they take you down there uh, to the city jail, and you there in the bullpen. These are uh, folks who have just arrived. Uh huh. It's just like the waiting room for the dentist folks. Uh huh. So you're waiting in here, and and you always impatient, and you there calling to God, hey, uh, when y'all gonna process me so I can get to my cell, or let me use this phone so I got things to do out there. You know what I'm talking about. And uh, sooner or later they get you out of this whole. Uh, this holding tank here, and then they march you to see the judge. Mm -hmm. And you may see him in person, or maybe you, uh, with all this technology we got, you may see him uh, televised on, on a screen or something there. Mm -hmm. So now we got uh, scenarios on both spectrum, but let me tell you what it means spiritually. You there that are in the pit, or, or thinking about going to visit the pit, these are live folks who think it doesn't exist. Uh, you end up in this old holding tank here. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are some that are still here on earth, may thank you up there with the Lord having a good time. Uh-huh. And there you are down there tormented. Day and night, there is no relief. You're there tormented, sir, ma'am, whoever you are. You're tormented. And then sooner or later, uh, you're going to go before the judge. Mm-hmm. Uh, you may, I don't know how it's going to go, you, but you're going to get before him. Uh, some of you may be screaming and, and, and kicking. You're either going to walk there or be dragged there. One way or another, you're going to stand before my boss. But my boss sent me here today. I told you I'm a traffic cop. I'm trying to warn you today. 
I'm standing in front of this old thing here because you don't need to go there. There's no fun here. Some folk think don't be a party down here. But I'm the traffic cop this morning. Warning, warning, take another route. Go this way. But folks are just running to hell. The message today. You missed the flight. And now you are left behind. Welcome to your new home. Welcome to your new home. But friend, I'm here to tell you, uh, Jesus said that he was going away to prepare a place for us. Uh, why don't you come join us and, and wait with me uh, till he comes back to get us. Uh, the flight is on the runway right now. The engines are running. Uh -huh. I can look there spiritually and I can see motors running. Uh, I'm trying to get you to understand, uh, sir, because in the twinkling of an eye, you can't bat your eye quick enough. We gonna be caught up and you're gonna miss the flight and be left behind. Brother DJ, you with me today? I am. Hallelujah. Well, son, we need to get these spiritual tools out and get to work. Amen. If you could see of these hands today in the spirit, uh, are they going to be full of, of, of blood? Because I got to go inside you and with the word of God and take some things out of you. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And, and when uh, those things come out of you, uh, they're going right here to the pit. Don't you go back and get them. Leave them there. Today, we're going to try to cut out some lying. We're going to try to cut out some adultery, some fornication. Uh huh. We're going to try to cut out uh, lesbianism, homosexuality. And we're going to put it there where it deserves to be. Why? Because we don't want you to miss the flight and be left behind. Last week, we talked about the seven seals that were opened. Then we talked about the seven trumpets and the seven angels who sounded those trumpets. The judgment of God. And today we're going to talk about the seven vials that are going to be poured out. God's wrath. God's judgment. Dante, get us over to the 16th chapter of the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. DJ, when you get there, let's go to work. Hallelujah. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of uh, God. Now listen, uh, this is John. And John has given this vision on the island of Patmos. Mm -hmm. And John hears, he hears uh, uh, of this great voice here. Now, my friend, uh, something we need to understand that this is in uh, uh, 96 AD when John is hearing this. That's quite some time. Uh, 96 AD and here we are in 2020. Those are a whole lot of years that have gone by. But John is trying to tell us something. Read on, son. Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured Hold out. Hold on there. So he's, the angel is told. The angel is giving marching orders. There are seven of these angels that God are going to pour out God's wrath. Let me... Let me tell you, sir, that uh, during this time, there are some, some saved folk running around there. Mm -hmm. 
There are some saved folks there. Uh, saved folks there. You see, you didn't make the first flight. You didn't make the rapture, is what we call it. Uh, the way we're going to be caught up. You didn't. You missed that one. Why did you miss the flight? Uh, you you know sometimes when you're going to go to travel, and there may be a group of you, and maybe sometimes you're going to travel alone. Mm -hmm. And your flight leaves at 5 a.m. And you figure, well, if I get up at, at 3, then I can have my coffee and donut. Mm -hmm. And then I probably can play a little video game. And I figure if I leave the house about hmm, 4.15, I should be able to, the airport is 45 minutes away. So if I leave at 4.15, I can just make it right on to the airport. And I should be able to get on my flight there. Uh huh. Uh, some people wait to the last minute to do anything. Mm hmm. And so there you are at, at, at 4.15. You done left the house driving uh, your, your car to the airport. Uh, nobody told you and you didn't turn your radio on, but there's a traffic jam there. Uh huh. You thought you had time, sir, ma'am. And by the time you make it to the airport, because there were some unexpected things that occurred. And by the time you make it to the airport, uh, from the windshield of your car, you can see that plane. That, there it is, Southwest Airlines Flight 72. It's still sitting there. But as you run in there and try to get yourself checked in, uh-huh, and you make it up there and they got to check you and search and make sure you ain't got on there with something you ain't supposed to have. You run there and you get through the gate there and you tell the man, I have my plane about to leave. And he asked, I got to go through your stuff here, sir. I, so hold on a second. And after he gets you going through your stuff, you run there and the door is closed. And there you are, you want to fight with the ticket agent. Let me tell you, friend, uh, that is this spiritual walk that I'm talking about. I don't know when this flight is leaving. So I got to be ready all the time. Uh, Paul told those Ephesians to walk circumspectively. I got to check everything. Mm -hmm. I got to make sure my life is right here. Uh, and this part of my life got to be right too. I got to get this. I forgot this was back here. Let me go straighten this up. Why? Because uh, Pastor Harmon don't want you to miss the flight. I don't know what time is what's coming. Don't ask me that. I don't know. Uh, don't nobody know what time is coming. But let me tell you this. You better be ready. I've had folks that travel with me and I would give them a call and say, uh, listen, friend, I'm on the way. Now, now be ready. Because I ain't going to be late for you and I, I got things to do, so be ready. Now, some of you that are listening, you there testifying. Oh, he ain't lying. He telling you the truth. Well, well, thank you right now, but I want you to just pay attention to the message. Uh-huh. And, and I call you and I say, be ready. I'm going to be there in five minutes. So be ready. Then there I go. I pull up there in five minutes. Poop, poop, poop. And there you come looking out the window. I don't read sign language. I read the language if you're standing right here ready, ready to get in the car. Jesus is not going to wait a minute for you. Do you understand, friend? He told you to be ready. Read, son. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and... Now, listen, uh, folks. I want you to understand something. Use your spiritual imagination. I, I told you there's been a, a rapture, or there's been a, 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 all the saints have been caught up. There's chaos everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's chaos. People have disappeared. Children are gone. Every one of them saints that you couldn't stand, them people gone too. So the world is in chaos. And the, the, the judgments of God is being poured out. Now, I want you to understand something, friend. 
You know, everybody is in survival mode. Uh, it ain't you, my buddy. Uh, no, if one of us can get up the ladder, I'm kicking you down because I'm trying to get up there. So this first angel goes out and pours out God's wrath or God's judgment. Now, listen to the language of the book. Who does this affect? Read, read it again, son. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast. Now listen, it said upon the men which had the mark of the beast. Is that what it said, son? That's what it Read said. Read on a little bit more. And upon them which worshipped his image. Now listen, well, let's talk about the mark for a minute. Let me just, I'm going to just dive in there and dive right back out. Well, maybe I shouldn't have said that because I'm long-winded. I might be in there for a few minutes. Uh... Because uh, you can't rush surgery. So that these uh, noisome and grievous sores. I mean these sores stink, uh, Sister Sheila. It was a foul smelling sore that came upon men. It was grievous, which means, oh, it was painful. This is the judgment of God. And it fell upon men who have taken this mark. Now, I know we all been taught that uh, there's, there's going to be a chip that go up under your, under your, under your skin on your, on your right hand. And uh, we also been taught that they're going to take one of them big old stampings and stamp you right up on your head. 666 or, or they're going to put some lines up there. And so uh, I'm prepared. You know, if I got to go through it, I'm just ain't going to let them put the little rice chip under me and I'll be good. Thou fool! This is about worship. This here is about worship. There's going to come a time when you're going to have to choose, my friend. Those of you that just laugh at us old Christian folks and, and they're crazy waiting on some God to jump out the sky and come and get them. Mm -hmm. Welcome to your new home. Because this is what you got to look forward to. Put your finger there for a minute, DJ. Dante, jump me over there to Revelation, the 13th chapter. And give me verses 16 through 18 real quickly. So these noisome and grievous sores fell upon men who had the mark. And read that little bit you got there. You stay there, Dante. Read a little bit out of Revelations you were at in the first verse there. In the, where it says, noise some source. And, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Now listen very carefully. Go ahead. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore uh -huh. upon the men. Upon the men. Which had the mark. Which of had the mark. And upon them which worshipped his And name. upon them that worshipped him. Now let's we'll go over there and read here in uh, the 13th chapter here. Verse 16. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in, either in their right hand or in their foreheads. Mm -hmm. Stop right there, son. Uh, now listen here. Uh, last week we heard that uh, God had uh, the uh, 144,000 of the Jews uh -huh, with his seal. What is God's seal? God's seal is the Ten Commandments. And he said it was in their forehead. Listen, friend. Listen, uh, anything that is in our forehead is in our mind. Paul said in uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, above the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. What a man thinketh, so is he. These that serve the beast. Uh, listen, when the beast, when the Bible talks about a beast, it's talking about a king or a kingdom. Mm -hmm. or a system or a government 
Oh, we've heard about uh, the one world uh, government that, that's coming and that you're trying to put together. Keep this in mind, fella. You see, those that serve the beast, they had a mark in their forehead or on their, in their uh, hand here. Right hand. In the right hand. You see, God didn't put uh, a hand represents power. God didn't put it on the seal on the, the, the children of Israel's hands. He put it here. Now you have a choice. Because it's here. Even right now today, you hear me preaching. It's on your mind. You have a choice whether you're going to receive it. But just think here. You won't be able to buy, sell, or trade. Think about it, sir. How you are with, with this first plague that is poured out upon you. And you have grievous sores all over your body. It pains you just to put a shirt on. Uh, ma'am, they ain't made enough perfume that's going to cover up this stench. Uh, don't worry about it. I don't know all them perfumes, but don't worry about them because they ain't going to do you no good. You see, they took uh, the mark in, in their forehead or their right hand. It's in the mind. Some of these folks are going to believe what the beast is telling them. And some of them are going to say, well, I don't believe it, but you're doing yet what the beast told you. You're going to have to bow down to this thing. Why do you think the papacy has removed the second commandment of God? I told you last week or the week before, go through it. And, and, and we went through it and we saw that uh, the second commandment was taken out of the book. Let me run you right over there real quick. Now, give me a, uh, Exodus 20 and 4 real quick. And uh, DJ going to read it for me. And then we're going to go right back over there to Revelations, DJ. I want to read the second commandment. And then you there with your smart self. Yeah, you got these smartphones. Go there on Google. Uh, ask that lady inside your phone. What's her name? Siri? Talk to her. Tell her to show you uh, the Roman Ten Commandments. Uh-huh. Tell Google, Google Map or whoever the thing is in, a, in Android. Tell them to tell you. Because most of us don't got too lazy to open a book. You got it, son, read. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything. Listen to this. Heaven. This is what uh, the papacy has taken out of the book. Read it, son. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. That's enough right there, son. I want you to see the point because these people in, in, in the future here, uh, they might not believe it, but they're going to bow down to the image of the beast. Listen, folks, uh, you're going to be made to bow down uh, because they're going to give you a choice. If you don't reject this Jesus Christ up here, if you don't reject the God of heaven who is throwing down all these grievous sores and all these uh, judgments upon us, uh, we're going to slice your head off. It ain't nothing uh, Donnie thought up. It's in the book. Now think about it. You there, young lady, you're pregnant. Uh -huh, and you're full of sores all over your body. Oh, they're grievous and they smell. You're in so much pain. Oh, you make your way uh, down there to the local hospital. Uh huh. You might think about Pastor Harmon uh, when he was saying, uh, don't go this way, and you thought you knew it all, you went on your way. But if you would have listened, you would have made the first flight. Now you're left behind. And there you are. Uh, you two young men, I'm just using uh, the sister right now, but there you are, you're pregnant, and you think somebody's going to have mercy on you, and you make your way over there to uh, uh, Mercy Hospital. Uh-huh. And so you go there. And there they are. And they're probably soldiers standing outside there. And there you are with grievous sores on your body. And they got some too. And you need help. 
and they tell you, now, now listen, I'm just trying to give you an example. It's going to be much worse than I can even try to give it to you. So don't just say, uh, take my example, say, well, I think I, I can make that. Oh, uh, no, my friend. Uh, this is just the way this little old mind of mine can give it to you. I told you I ain't a real smart guy. Uh-huh. Uh, I, just, uh, I just know enough to help somebody. Oh, and here I am trying to help you. But there you are at Mercy Hospital. And they're looking at you and they say, oh, we can help you. We, well, come on this way. Oh, oh. But we need to know, uh, are you a, one of them servants of, of, of Jesus who's, who's caused this stuff to fall upon us? Remember, friend, uh, we're going to give account for every idle word spoken. Uh, remember, friend, that by your words are you justified and by your words are you condemned? Will you deny him? Think about it. Hey, you are in so much pain. Oh, you carrying a baby that, that you about to give birth to. Huh? Oh, uh, uh, who? Are you going to deny him? Let me tell you, my friend. Oh, uh, why don't you accept him today? You ain't got to go through this. Why don't you come over here in the seating area and let's wait on God? Uh, he said he'd come back to get us. Uh, his word said he can't lie. I never thought he ain't let, let me down. Uh, I may have got off track, but he has never let me down. Hallelujah. So the hand represents power. In the right hand, the mind. So what you think and what you do, God doesn't force us to do anything. Never will he force us to do anything. He doesn't force me to serve him. I willingly serve him because of what he done for me because when nobody else thought about me, when nobody else cared about me, he looked down and said, I love you. Get yourself up, stand up on your feet and then he gave me strength to stand up. I serve the Lord Jesus Christ and none other. I don't depend on any man. I depend on him. Don't go this way, friend. Oh, uh, it's danger there. Can't you see the sign? Uh, come on this way. The Jews got the mark in their mind. Why not the hand? Because God doesn't force you. He give you make your own decision. Just like it is now, you have an opportunity to make a decision. But see, these folks ain't gonna have an opportunity. Uh, 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 other than losing their head. So it's in the mind, some people are going to serve them because they believe it anyway. Uh, let me give you an example. There are some people that they call atheists. They'll tell you up and down, left and right and sideways, there is no God. They'll run up the front of you and down the back of you telling you there is no God. Hmm. You see, they believe in it, then they'll show you. They'll go out there and do anything they can do. They don't believe it's a devil either. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, friend, if you don't straighten up and fly right, you're going to be right with him. Come on over here. Let me show you where you're going to end up. Mm-hmm. Uh, fix your glasses right, because I want you to take good luck. Right here in the pit. There's no love in the pit. There's no mercy in the pit. Give me back to Revelation, DJ, 16. Pick up where you left off. Verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of... Uh, listen, the second angel goes out, Rochelle. Uh, listen, you folks that, uh, that don't believe this stuff, let me tell you. Uh, let me tell you something. Welcome to your neighborhood. This is what you got to look forward to. I know there are some of you uh, uh, that they're watching here. And you didn't even know this was in the book. Uh, well, now you know, my friend. <laughs> but you've got a chance now that you know. Uh, I ain't writing this in there myself. I'm standing here. I'm not there at your address erasing words and putting them there. 
I told you, open up the book and follow me. I haven't changed the book. I've expounded on the word that you're reading yourself. Now think about this. There, that person is. Oh, uh, oh, I don't want you to imagine it's you. I want you to imagine that. Oh, uh, you here waiting with Pastor Harmon. Oh, uh, you here waiting on God to come back and get you. You waiting on Jesus to, 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 to get those out the grave. Uh-huh. And then he's going to rapture us up. And there we are there in the clouds with him. Mm -hmm. But there's someone there whose body is full of sores. Oh, and they hurt so bad. They smell so bad. And then, you know, a lot of you are campers. And you know when you cut yourself, you go down there to the water. And you go there to, to rinse it off. You don't care if it's salt water or fresh water. You just want to rinse the dirt out of there and all that there. But listen to uh, this vow here. Read that again about that second angel. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. Now picture this. The second angel pours out this uh, second vial. And all the seas, uh, Sheila, And then in Rochelle, it says everything in there died. Didn't it, DJ? It did. Oh, I like them crab legs. Did them crabs die too, DJ? Every living soul. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what about them lobster tails? Every living soul. Everything there died. Think about commerce. There's no trade now. Uh-huh. Uh, sir, just hear me. Uh, listen, uh, there ain't no food or water that can get to you. And I know some of you said, well, we don't, we ain't worried about that, man, because we don't, we don't drink salt water stuff. We don't eat them fish. Huh. Go on talk about that third angel, DJ. Read on. And mm -hmm. the third angel. Listen up, Smarty. Read. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters. Uh-huh. I think that just spoiled your party, didn't it? Uh-huh. There's no fresh water to drink. What are you going to do now? Friend, I'm begging you. Uh, I'm telling you. Uh, I don't want you to go here to the pit. Uh, listen to your neighborhood. It don't sound too good, do it? I want you to change your address. Uh, spiritually. Uh huh. Because uh, the neighborhood that you're about to go to, and it ain't going to matter what country, what city you're in. This is what you got to look forward to. Now, if the, the seas have turned to blood, the rivers and stream and freshwater sources, uh, they turn to blood. What would you do for an ice cold bottle of Nestle Pure Life? They're about the cheapest water there is. Uh, I don't spend a whole lot on water. I just don't buy the one that says, will cause cancer. I'll leave that one on the shelf. Mm -hmm. I'll just buy the next best thing. Now, what would you do, sir, in your near new neighborhood? There is no drinking source, Rochelle. How long can you go? Uh-huh. It ain't going to be, what would you do for a Klondike bar? No, 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 no. It's what would you do for one drop of this bottle of water I got here? Because there's none available. Mm-hmm. Are you that thirsty? Renounce your God. Uh Look at this bottle here, it's sweating. Uh huh. You want you want to take a whiff? Mm hmm. All you got to do is renounce that old God up there that that's casting down these, all these sores on me. Uh, I, they hurt so bad. I want to pour some of this water on them. Uh, but see, you know this is a hot commodity. I don't want to waste any of it. But I'm willing to give you some if you just go ahead and renounce Him. How long do you think you can go, my friend? I told you that there were still some saved folk here, didn't I? But let me tell you, uh, uh, let me tell you how they got to this point. Mm -hmm. Some of you are going to be able to identify with this. Uh huh. You know, before the plane, before uh, the flight took off, mm -hmm, uh, you were standing here talking to Dottie and he, and he disappeared. That's the flight I'm talking about. 
Mm -hmm. You see, there were a whole lot of uh, preachers and all this stuff and, and, and just good people who they ain't never done nothing to nobody. Uh, it was a lot of them there. Uh-huh. Just before the flight. Mm-hmm. You had old gray-haired uh, people like me preaching, stick to the word. Uh, this again is prior to flight time. And here he is and me and a few others just saying, don't change God's word. No, if it didn't say that, don't make it say it. Uh, listen to me, friend, because this is right now. We're talking present. Right now, I'm here telling you, uh, don't change the book. Don't change God's word. Uh, listen, lady preacher, I'm going to say it real loud so you can hear me. Uh, if it ain't in the book, it shouldn't be. Don't change God's word. Uh, listen, uh, please hear me. Don't change God's divine order. When you change the book, you know what's over here. Do you want me to say it again? I think I will. Right here in the pit. I want you to hear it when you lay down at night. When you leave, when you turn this broadcast off. I want you, all I want you to hear is the pit. You're going to hear a uh, Pastor Harmon's voice. That's all you're going to hear. In the pit, in the pit. Uh, when you get home, you start to cook. Uh, all you're going to remember is the pit. When you throw that batter there on that chicken. Uh-huh. And you lay it over there gently in the grease and it pops you. All you're going to think about is the pit. You ain't going to be able to sleep at night. Uh, you gonna, you got them nice fresh sheets on the bed. Then you go there because it's kind of chilly here in Milwaukee. And you turn that, 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 that blanket warmer up. You might turn it up to eat. No, go on, turn it up tonight so it's night and toasty for you. Mm -hmm. And soon as you get there in that bed, it's going to be so hot, you're going to think about the pit. You're going to think about that old pastor that was saying, don't go this way, change your mind. Please change your heart, change your way. Uh, lady pastor there, uh, uh, go back in and I know uh, you, you said you got called. I, I heard that. But go see if it lines up with the scripture. If it don't line up, that was the devil come tell you a lie. You still got time, sister. Uh, I told you we just here on the runway. I don't know how much time. I don't know when we're going to take off. But you better hurry. These are those people. They are the, when I told you that they're saints uh, during this tribulation period here. These are those. These are those pastors there that told you uh, God going to give you great abundance. All you got to do is give to God and God give to you. Mm -hmm. uh, let me tell you something, friend. When this does occur, and it will, trust me. Let me tell you something. Uh, I gave y'all the phone number here. I told you it's 414-375-7179. Ain't that right, Sister Harmon? Uh, but don't call here because we ain't going to be here. We ain't going to be caught up. Uh-huh. Ain't no use to calling, but let me tell you what you should do. Come here. Uh, all the minutes you can get here, kick that door in. Go there in that office and get that, old, that computer because they're going to take your Bible. Go there and there and get that computer out of there. And every message that Pastor Harmon don't, done gave you, download it somewhere, uh, make copies, distribute it because then you're going to need it. Oh, there's still going to be some pastors here. Uh, and if they're still here, you might not want to talk with them. Why? Because they missed the flight and they're left behind. You was following them to begin with. Mm -hmm. Our job as pastors are to get you ready to meet him. There's some pastor that's preaching right now. Oh, come as you are, gospel. There's some pastor preaching right now that God's going to give you this. You've been praying about that new car. Uh-huh. What color you want it to be? Because I'm going to tell God what color you want. God ain't concerned about no car. You know what he's concerned about? Uh-huh. The thing that lives inside of you, my friend, he's concerned about your soul. Uh, that's why he wakes me up here. He woke me up Sunday morning. Oh, uh, Donnie, you got work to do. You got to go and perform today. Uh, Sometimes, friend, I don't even know what I'm going to preach. Uh, I just say, God, give me something. 
And when God put a little something on me, I go there and read it a little bit and say, God, open it up to me. Uh, but some of you talking about, uh, you're talking like you had a conversation with God. You're talking like uh, God didn't come down and sit at the snack bar with you. And what, God? Yeah, you, you're right, God. I, I shouldn't have did that. But yeah, I'm going to get this money and then I'm going to teach them how to get it, God. You're talking to your father, the devil. Do you hear me? You are the ones, uh huh, are uh, these saints because you knew the way. A lot of folks ain't going to know what happened, but you're going to know because uh, you, you had gotten the word of God before and then you went off and did your own thing. You did not stick to the book. Jesus said, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Some of you are just chasing after money. The Bible says, of uh, many that desire to be rich, they have pierced themselves through. They've killed themselves. They've destroyed themselves. Oh, because they're chasing this old money here. I see these old crooked pastors uh, as I'm flipping through the Facebook. And I look down there, and they talk about money, and I see that these folks are they almost got 2,000 people watching them. I think when it says 1.5K, uh, I believe that's 1,005 people watching. 1,500 people being deceived. And here I am telling the truth. I look down there. Ain't nobody here. Let me just hold tight. Somebody, somebody want to hear God's word. Somebody, God, touch somebody, Lord. And then I look there, and there's one person. Oh, God, thank you for them. Thank you, God, for that one person. Lord, touch them right now, Lord. Now reveal your word unto them. And then I stand there, and then one or two of them all jump in there. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. And then I don't see any activity for a while. I go back a week later. Only, maybe only five, Rochelle. Oh, they don't want God's word. I told y'all I'm just a traffic cop. I'm trying to tell you, don't go this way. But there you are. You're pushing me out of the way. You ready to knock me down. You threaten me. Get, your, get out of here with that Bible stuff. My friend, it's going to come back to you. It may not be in your day. Uh, but let me tell you, if it ain't in your day, come on over here. Mm, you ain't going to miss out. You'll be right here in the pit. You're going to suffer day and night. Oh, God, I'm sorry. God, help you. I'll try now. I'll do it. God, I'll do it. While the blood is running warm in your veins, while you still have all your faculties, sir or ma'am, while you're still able to make a decision, come on over here and get on the runway and let's wait for Christ. Come on, please. Let's wait on him. But some of you are saying, no, no, no. And you change the divine order of God. Divine order. Uh, Christ is the head of every man. Not some of them, Rochelle. Every man. Mm -hmm. And the head of every woman is man. I'm a man. Mm -hmm. Now look at here. If you're a lesbian and you don't have the surgery and fixed up down there... You're not no man. You're still a woman. It don't matter what the doctor told you. I don't care how many of them hormones they don't pumped in you. You're still a woman. Man, I don't care what you done cut off. Uh huh. I don't care what you done glued on. You're still a man. That's all you are is a man. That's the divine order. So listen, woman. When you say oh, God called you and you out there pastoring, and your husband, uh, uh, maybe he work at Pick and Save. Maybe a manager over there. And he's a deacon uh, here in the church with you. Uh, uh, let's even take it further. You a pastor and your husband a pastor. The blind leading the blind. You can't take God's word and change it. Nowhere in scripture do we find this. No business. Let me take you to natural. Maybe you understand it. No business can survive with two heads. Me and this pretty lady right here, we don't think alike. Do you understand this? 
We don't think alike. We won't discipline alike. She's a mother. She's always going to be loving to her kids. No matter what the situation. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, lady? Your child ain't going to never be wrong. Do you hear me? Listen to me. And for a man, we know how dis- we got to discipline this boy. We got to make sure he understands. Uh, a woman might not understand uh, when we do our type of discipline. Because man ain't going to treat woman a whole lot different out there in the world. Do you hear this? Oh, well, the woman, you can go for a job interview. Uh-huh, you get yourself all pretty. Oh, you get one of them little tight things and push everything up. And you can make it tight out in the back. And there you go to your job interview. Uh-huh. And he might give you a job because you come in looking good. Now, did that hair I come, I'm more qualified than her. Uh-huh. I got my suit on and got everything, got my, my resume and everything together. And I go in there to the interview. Thank you for the interview, sir. I really appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to working with you. And he tells me, wait, wait. good job been taken. Well, you just listened to it about 30 minutes ago. I was the first one here. Well, she, she got here before. Oh, I see why. There are many of you know what I'm talking about because you've fallen into this situation. Men, we, differ, we discipline differently. But those that are uh, uh, faking over here and trying to get you somewhere, these are the ones that's going, the saints, I told you, because now they know the way. They said, I should have did it on that side. That's what I'm trying to get you to do. Do it before the fight takes off. But no, some of you ain't going to hear me. Uh, you're going to wire, you're going to end up in the pit. And maybe this may go to your children's children. I don't know when it's going to happen. But I can tell you this for sure. It's going to happen. That's why I told you, go in there, kick that door down, get them things, download them, and send them and put them in special places. So when you die, because you refuse God and you're down there in the pit, or maybe your son, maybe your daughter will look through some things and say, oh, here's something my daddy had. Let me pop it in. Oh, who's this old gray-haired preacher? I remember my daddy used to talk about some old gray-haired man. Uh, let me listen to him because obviously uh, he, he didn't. Hallelujah. Which scripture number I'm on over there, DJ? Verse 5. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Hallelujah. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteousness, O Lord, which art and was. Now listen to this angel proclaiming God's righteousness. You there that say, well, God is a loving God. He went, I can't see God doing this. I can't see God. Oh, you better open your eyes here, sister. Uh, brother. Now, there's a lot of you talking about, well, God is love. And, and I know God will not do this. And he has forgiven me all my sins. Listen to the words of the book. Read it one more again, son. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was, and shall be, because thou hast judged us. Listen, God's judgment is correct. It is righteous. Listen, if you do unrighteous, come on. You know, jump right on in. I ain't got to tell you. Just run on in there. That's where you want to go. Uh-huh. If you got a skateboard. Uh, it's big enough. If you got a motorcycle car, drive it right on in there. You're going to get exactly what you want. But I'm still here with my old rag trying to flag you down, uh, telling you to surrender. Come on over here. Don't drive there because that pit uh, is endless. It keeps on going. But when you come over here, <laughs> it's life everlasting. Read on, son. For they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink. These are all the saints and the prophets who have been martyred. Now listen, right now, is this, this is talking about uh, the, the prophets, those two prophets that come back for 160 days and evangelize the world. Three and a half years that all you folks that are left behind. And these other saints that they're talking about are the ones that have uh, they done been beheaded. Oh, uh, you remember I told you about the lady with the Mercy Hospital? Uh-huh. Well, you see, she was the one that said, I'm, I'm so concerned, my baby, and I'm so thirsty. I'll do it. I'll bow down. I'll, I'll accept him. I believe in, in this false God. I believe. Come on, give me this mark. I, I accept him. Uh, listen, my friend. This is very important if you don't write down nothing else. If you don't hear nothing else. If you accept 
the beast and his mark. Meaning that you believe the forehead and the hand that you do. Whatsoever your hands find to do. Uh huh. This is what it's talking about. Some person going to say, I ain't going to believe. I don't believe it now. Nope, I'm not going to accept that. But yet you're going to get down and bow down to this image. You're going to have to have a choice, sir. I told you about that bottle of water. What would you do for it? What, uh, ma'am, uh, you done had this baby and it needs care. Uh, when my children were little, they had, they had ear infections. Oh, it was so, I, I couldn't take it. I, what can I do? Let me hurry up and get him to the hospital. Say, Give me something for this boy. I don't want to see him suffer. What can you do for him? And the doctor gave him some medicine and then did, he was fine. But what happens in that day and time when you go there with your child and he looks up at you and says, Mama, I'm in so much pain. Help me, please help me. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? How are you going to deny my Lord? You see, if you accept God over here right now on the runway, uh, you won't have to make that decision over there. Do you hear me, friend? Oh, it ain't nothing I'm making up. We're going through the book together. And because you slain God's saints, Mm -hmm. Because you slay God's prophets. You get blood to drink because you're worthy. Welcome to your new neighborhood. Read, son. Verse 6 again. For they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, mm -hmm. for they are worthy. Read on. And I heard another... Out of the altar say, even so, Lord God, almighty, true, and righteous, righteousness are the, thy judgments. Testify that God is righteous, that his judgments are true. Oh, you sitting there that still want to say, oh, God ain't that kind of God. Listen here. Listen to the words of the book. You still think I'm crazy. Oh, uh, that's all right. I'm going to be crazy until he come get me. Oh, Lord, I want to stay crazy. I don't want to think normal like you. Do you understand this? Let me show you what normal takes you to. Oh, you already know. I don't need to go over there. No, I'm going to take you there. Right here to the pit. Straight to hell. I know a lot of folks don't believe in hell no more. I, I, I understand that. Uh-huh. But you're going to find out. I, I, I guarantee you, you're going to believe. Read on, son. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Listen to this. All you sun worshipers. <clears throat> Not only are you there with grievous sores all over your body that just stink. Uh, you can't even lay down because these things hurt. You can't even put on a t-shirt. There's no water to risk of these sores. Do you get this? Is this the neighborhood you want to live in? Is this it? This is what you're going to settle for? You're a tough guy, huh? There's no water for you to drink. Unless you sell your soul. Unless you bow down to the beast. Don't think it's like a lion or anything like that. I told you it's talking about a kingdom. The 13th chapter of Revelation even talk about the United States here. He said he saw a two-headed lamb as a, as a two-headed lamb. Speaking blasphemy. Uh, I ain't going to go there. Uh, but my point is, do you want to be there? That's part of our class. Come on on, on Tuesday mm -hmm. and learn with us. You don't want to be there. So now here the sun is it's so hot. Uh, you down there in Arizona in the summertime. Oh, it's about 120 degrees down there. And some of y'all done got used to it. I went down to uh, California one time, man. It was so hot. I, I stayed in the air condition, didn't Rochelle? I ain't going outside. Too hot out there. But some of you done got used to it. You out there working and it's 120 degrees. Oh, let me tell you, friend. You ain't going to get used to this. No, because the Bible says that men are going to be scorched. 
They ain't made an air conditioner strong enough. Now there you are <laughs> with sores all over your body. You have no water to drink and it's so hot. <laughs> you going to desire to die, but you can't. Oh, Lord. Oh, it's so hot in here. And there you are. You're going to blaspheme God. Oh, God. Oh, I'm not going to hear from you, God. I don't want to hear from you. Read on, son. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed, and blasphemed the name of Do you God. see this? Do you see this? Is this how some of you are? You're going through everything, uh, but you still, you can't change anything in here. Uh, these men did not give glory to God and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm wrong, God. They didn't ask for repentance. You know why some of you don't do it? Because your pastor don't preach it. I told you, they don't preach it. You don't even know what it is, do you? You see that word there in the book? Repent it. Past tense. Uh -huh. You won't even do it present tense. Some of you didn't even know what it was. I told you to get a, a property manager marker and write it there in your hand. And then go there to your pastor. What does this word mean? You better tell me right now. I ain't never heard you preach this. Some old gray head uh, preacher on January 26th, uh, around 12 o'clock, was preaching this word. I ain't never heard it, pastor. You better tell me something. They don't preach it no more. But you will hear it from this pulpit. That's what God put me here to cry loud and spare not. Offer you repentance. Will you accept it, sir? Ma'am, will you accept God's grace? Will you become godly sorry? And say, God, I'm sorry. I did wrong, God. Forgive me. Read, son. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness. And they... Now listen to this. The fifth angel pours out his vial on the seat of the beast. And his king was, kingdom was full of darkness. Now let me just give you an example. Let me just give you this example so you can follow and understand this. President Trump is the president of the United States. You get this? His, his kingdom is the United States. This is his territory. This is his kingdom. There's going to be a one world government. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, if, you, if you just come on to a Sunday school, we're there in the book of Daniel. It's opening up so much to us. Uh, we're learning so many things there. We're learning the time where we're at now. But some of you don't have Sunday school. Uh, you have choir rehearsal all week long. You have get rich classes all week long. You have praise and dances all week long. And you ain't learning nothing because your pastor don't know nothing. Preaching to you about prosperity. When he should be preaching about getting your soul right to meet him. I don't care nothing about your wallet. I care about your soul. But this beast and this kingdom, uh, this is telling you his kingdom is coming to an end. Uh-huh, we about to round this up. These are the last uh, seven vials. Did y'all understand that? So here it is. It's poured on the, the, the king, who's ever in the seat at that time. Uh-huh. And the system, it's worldwide. It's a worldwide system. You can't move to France because France is a part of the system. You can't stay in the United States. It's a part of the system. It don't matter where you move. It's a part of the system. Oh, uh, the saints are gone. I don't want to be here for this party. Uh, again, welcome to your new neighborhood. Read on, son. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. Listen, they had the same swords that you had. Oh, they didn't, they, they didn't get by because they sit there. And they gnawed their tongues with pain. They don't double chew their tongue off. Because they were in so much pain. They were in pain just like you. Even those rulers there. Uh -huh, in that kingdom. Uh, they were in pain just like you. My friend I keep telling you. 
I don't want you to have to go through that. Oh, oh just give me a chance. Oh, listen, let me tell you about the God I serve. Oh, it don't matter what you've done. It don't matter, sir. Oh, baby, you don't kill some folks. Oh, but listen, he said, I forgive you. Maybe you messed up along the way. Maybe you, you ain't never been saved. That's what he got me here for, uh, to try to pull you over here, and we can talk about it. He says, come now, or not tomorrow, come now, and let us reason together. God wants to talk to you about it. Uh-huh. Uh, before you miss the flight and you're left behind. Do you hear me? Read on, son. And blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. And Ain't nobody pain. trying to repent. All they do continually is to blaspheme God. Listen, it's the thing in them that you are going to accept because you remember, remember that bottle of water, what would you do for it? Oh, uh, do you want, maybe you want, you don't eat, you ain't got to get your T-bone steak. You take a, uh, a hamburger. Oh, uh, you eat meat a bun. Oh, uh, you're so hungry, but there's nothing there for you. What you going to do? You still think you can make it there? Uh, uh, I know some of you good in the woods. and You can figure things out. But did you remember... I back last week that all the green grass is going to be gone and the trees and all that stuff. Do you remember? Uh, I don't think you, you'll get too far swimming in blood. Do you hear me, my friend? Uh, why don't you come over here uh, and let me show you. Let me point you in that direction. Uh, I know you're running. You're trying to get there. Uh, you almost knocked me down trying to get there, but, but God told me to stand here and accept your abuse. He told me here to stand here and let you talk about me. He told me to take it, and then he told me just to point you that way. So it don't matter what you think about me. It don't matter how bad you talk about me. It don't matter what you throw at me. I still got to tell you, please, I'll go that way. Read on, son. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might Listen be prepared. Listen to this. We're getting prepared for something. Uh, uh, you know, Deacon Brian, uh, it said that, that, that the river Euphrates was dried up. There's uh, about something about to come marching through there. Mm-hmm. This is the preparation for the great battle of Armageddon. Uh-huh, good versus evil. I'm so glad I'm on the Lord's side. Oh, I'm so glad that he looked down at little old me, a person that wasn't worth anything, and he says, I can pick you up, and I can make something out of you because I love you. Oh, I want to pick them up too. I want them people there too. Go there and preach to them. Oh, those people who feel like they're nothing, those that feel like they're high and mighty, go there and preach to them. Tell them I love them. Tell them oh, oh, that that plane is on the runway. Oh, you don't know when I'm coming back, Donnie. Oh, but go there and scream and yell to them. Oh, I might come while you're there talking. Uh huh. But you don't know and I don't know. Only the Father knows. But go there and tell them. Go there and warn them. I ain't got time to talk about your bank account. Mm -mm. I ain't got time to talk about no new car. I got to talk about your soul. I got to get you to think. Read, son. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. These are the things that are performing these miracles that got uh, these folks food and said, now, nah, yeah, we're going to worship him. Uh, this, he's got to be a god. Doing all these miracles. That's these demon spirits. You false prophets that are lying, you got the same demon spirit in you. Talking about God will accept you any kind of way. Liar! Let me tell you this. I ain't said it in a while. God gonna get you! Read, son. For they are the spirits of the, of the devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle of the great... Do you hear this? 
Uh, this is the, the preparation for the great battle of Armageddon. I know y'all don't believe this. Uh, uh, but I beg you, sir, why don't you search the scripture yourself? Or why don't you look in the book yourself? Hallelujah to God. It's going to happen. Uh, God declares the end in the beginning. And so when you see these things come to pass, that you might believe. Come on over here Tuesday night. Uh, let's go through. I ain't no history major. Uh, so when the Bible's tell me something, I'll go through the history books. And I, I, I believe it already, but I see it in, in the book. Just like he said. All of these things with pinpoint accuracy. It's there in the book. Read. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches. Listen, uh, I told you something. You folks got them black letter Bibles. Now, <laughs> oh, we about to hear my Lord. Oh, my boss about to talk to you. Uh, DJ, read, read what my Lord is saying there. He said, I behold, behold uh -huh. I come as a thief. Mm. Blessed is he that watches. Listen, let me tell you something. Uh, I don't know what time a thief coming to my house, Rochelle. Uh, we got all them alarm systems and cameras, but we can't be at home all the time. Uh huh. If I knew uh, when Jeff Roy was coming to rob me, I'd stand there and wait for him. But I don't have any idea when he's coming. So I make preparations uh, to be ready. Uh, I got a camera up there because I can't be there. Uh, uh, that thing's watching. Uh, I got an alarm system because if he come through the door, uh, maybe this thing go off and they call them people and they call police, huh? You, you, you follow me? I don't know what time Jesus is coming. Uh, so I got, to, I got to make preparation. I got to be ready. In every area of my life, I got to look and be ready. I got to walk circumspectively and not as a fool. Read on, D. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Do you hear this? This is the Lord telling you. He said, you bless if you're watching and, you, and you're keeping yourself ready. Oh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, I know you're probably tired of hearing me, uh, but you can't turn me off. Uh, that don't tell you something. Uh, you don't believe I'm right, but you believe I'm right. I know it sounds crazy, but see, uh, uh, that's what it is in your mind. Uh, uh, DJ, let's go. Yeah, keep your finger right there. We should only have one or two more verses to go. Uh, let me just go take, give you an in-depth look at what Jesus is, is saying here. Uh, you, you, you should be able to get it from there. Uh, Dante, take that little black mouse on your table there. Scroll across the screen there and, and give me Matthew. I'll go over there to chapter 24. And start there at uh, probably about verse 36. I may go on to the end of that. Just hang on in there. Uh, this is talking about your life. If there was something that's going to save my life, I want to hear it all. Don't hold nothing back, Pastor Harmon. Give it to me. DJ, when you get there, let's go. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No Do you hear this? I'm not making things up. It's right there in the book. No man knows. Go ahead. No man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. Even those angels that are pouring out these vows, they don't know. Oh, Jesus don't even know. He said only the father knows. Read on, son. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also, also the coming of the okay, son. Okay, here, listen here. He said as the day of Noah was. Uh-huh. It's, it's, some of you are you out there partying, ain't you? Mm -hmm. We out there getting married. We out there at the smoke shop with our smoking pipe thing out there. Oh, they don't leave legalize marijuana, and there you are. When the Bible says no, I ain't changing it. That's uh, the abbreviated for Noah. Talking about Noah. Don't go say, oh, Pastor Harmon changed it because it didn't say Noah there. Uh huh. But just as it were in them days, they're going to be doing it these days. Hey, hey, Noah telling them, uh, there's going to come a flood. Uh, save yourself. Come on, get in here. Come on, get yourself right before God. Uh, 
Oh, today here I am doing the same thing that Noah did tell you. <laughs> Please, uh, uh, there's going to come some grievous sores. Oh, all the water going to turn to blood. Please come on over here. Oh, go this way. Oh, you don't want to be here when this happens. Come on. Oh, save yourself. Uh, save your family. Get your wife and kids. Oh, and let's obey the book. Read on, son. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking. Listen to this. Uh, they were having a party. Uh, they ain't thinking about no God. Uh, they ain't thinking about going to no church. They ain't thinking about no preaching. No, some of them thinking out there how good they can twerk. How good I can shake my, my backside. Uh-huh, yeah, it's talking about you. You out there partying. You out there, uh, I want to see how big an eyelash I can get on my face. You ain't thinking about God. And some of you being out there, you are at the gym. You there working out, you just obsessed with yourself. You ain't thinking about no God. And there you, preacher. Oh, uh, I ain't forgot you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to you. You thought you'd get loose. No, nope, I got you around the neck. There you are in your old fancy car that you don't rob the people for. Uh-huh. There you are. You partying too. Mm-hmm. You think you got a little time. You think you Mr. Smarty Pants. Oh, uh, well, this ain't happened yet, so I can still, you know, when this happened, I'll probably jump in. I'm going to get myself right. And then, then you, you, know, you know I'm telling you the truth. A lot of you pastors and a lot of you laymen too. Uh, I'm going to get myself right, but I'm going to do this for a little while and before you know it. You, the thought of even getting right done left you. It's gone. It's not in your heart. It's not in your mind. The Bible says that God is going to send you strong delusions that you will believe a lie. A lot of you are there now. You believe the lie uh, that the man and the woman are equal. I don't care how many equal rights uh, they don't put up there. God said the man is the head. Mm -hmm. Some of you there with your first, second, and third wife, and God told you, no, you're supposed to be with the one you was with. You done changed it, ain't you? Mm -hmm. Talking about you. Uh huh. You there partying. Mm -hmm. Just like they were doing in the day of Noah. Read on, son. For as in the days that were before the flood, eating and drinking, marrying and giving marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the, the ark. You people are going to keep on doing this thing until the plane takes off. Uh, you remember I told you Southwest Airlines, I think it was Flight 72 sitting out there? Uh, I'll give you a natural, uh, it's a parable. I'm giving you a natural illustration to give you a spiritual meaning. Uh, we out there on the runway. We looking out the window because a lot of us are seated here. We looking out the window and, and see uh, the pastors are still out there working. Uh, get that one, Pastor. Tell, tell him about Christ. Oh, oh, pastor, you there. Oh, there's some laymen out there. Go tell them people over there about the Lord. Tell them oh, that we about to take off. The engines are running. But you're going to wait. And then that door is going to close. And once the door closes, no one can open it. Do you hear me? Listen to the language of the book. Since you won't hear me, read. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of Son of Man be. Do you hear this? Jesus himself is saying it's going to be the same way. Oh, uh, uh, fella, if you think Pastor Harmon preaches just, just too hard, uh, you don't want to listen to Pastor Harmon because he just preached too hard. Welcome to your new neighborhood. You won't say that when you got those grievous sores. Oh, you're going to cry to hear anybody's voice. Read, son. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken. Do you hear this? This is what's going to happen. Let me give you a good example. Oh, me and this person here, we are here working in the field. And we're there working together. And man, we just chit-chatting about something. I'm a saved man and he's unsaved. I ain't going to never be the example of the unsaved because I know where I'm going. So I here I am. I'm a saved man and, and he's unsaved. And well, we could be talking about sports or something. 
Uh-huh. We there just chit-chatting. And we down there picking green beans. I'm a city boy. I, I don't eat too many green beans. I, I eat a lot of something else. But it ain't green beans. But, but you get the point. We're there picking something. And in a twinkling of an eye, I disappear. And he looks up. Donnie, where you at? Do you get this picture? Where'd he go? And all around there's people look, hey man, where'd so-and-so go? Guess what? You been left behind. Welcome to your new home. Since you want to deny my Lord, welcome to your new home. Read on, son. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. Mm -hmm. The one shall be taken and the other other left. Uh-huh. Go on. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Now listen, what he's telling you is just what he just told you in the book of Revelation. You don't know what time be coming. So get ready and stay ready. Pastor Harmon, what, what I'm doing my walk, I fall. Get up. Don't stay there and waddle in the milk and murk. Get yourself up. Call your friend. Call somebody. Tell them this is what happened. And then they can encourage you to restore you. Listen, God love you. Oh, uh, uh, listen, friend. I made a whole lot of mistakes in this walk. Oh, uh, don't think Pastor Harmon ain't, ain't failed and got myself all dirty. Oh, uh, uh, friend, I'm just like you. Uh-huh. I don't fail a whole lot of time. And I got to get myself up. <laughs> I got to take the word of God and clean myself up. Oh, Father, I've sinned. Please forgive me, Lord. Oh, you let me cleanse myself with your word, oh God. Because your word will make me clean. Do you hear me? Read on, son. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known and what, what, what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have mm -hmm. not suffered his house to I be told you, if I knew what time uh, Jeffro was going to come break in my house, she'd be there waiting. Mm -hmm. and, and trust me, sir, I'm not there waiting there with, with a broomstick. I'm not there with a, with a baseball bat. No, 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 no. Uh, I got something in my hand. I'm going to protect my wife at all costs. Enter at your own risk. Or you might get there to this place a little faster than you thought. I ain't looking to hurt a fly. But I ain't looking for a fly to come in and hurt me either. Some of you folks think that you could just, uh, uh, just push Christians around and, and kick us and there ain't nothing going to happen. Uh, I don't suggest that, sir. Uh huh. Because we're going to protect ourselves. We ain't going to start nothing with you. Uh, but we're going to protect ourselves. And, and then once you uh, get up off the floor, once your senses come back, Oh, we're going to sit there and love you and try to talk to you and tell you, see, you done went down the road, wrong road. You learn naturally, so now I'm going to explain it to you spiritually. Read on, son. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Was that the end of the chapter there? No, 45. Okay, read on. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Whom his Lord hath made ruler over So his listen household. to this. Let me paint the picture a little clearer for you. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus has called uh, me to pastor. And that's what I'm doing. I'm here pastoring. And uh, he may have called you over there to pastor too. And you think because he delaying his time, you think that he should be back by now. Uh, uh, you start to compromise God's word a little bit. Uh, uh, you start to say, okay, folks, come as you are. Make sure you bring an offering, though. Come as you are. Oh, you want to wear shorts? Come on in here. Uh, uh, you, you, you want to preach with your T-shirt on? Uh, you want to come to God anyway? Come on. Uh, you want to live a raggedy life before? Come on in here. But let me tell you, sir, there's a little old church over here. Uh, right over here in Wauwatosa. Uh, we still old fashioned. We still stick to the rules. Uh, Jesus left me in charge and he told me to do this. I'm going to do just that. You may come in here with a pocket full of money just falling out the side and say, Pastor Harmon, uh, here I want to help you with your ministry and make you grow. But I don't want to hear you preaching about homosexuality. You know, I'm a philanthropist and I got a lot of money and, 
and me and John, we've been married for three years. That big old rusty fella there you married to? Come here, let me show you where you, your money, John and all your, or your unfaithful folks are going right here to the pit. I don't want your dirty money. I'm going to preach the truth. That's all I got. Oh, I can't stand on nothing but the truth. That's all you're going to ever get. You know if none of these uh, pews ever fill up. If I don't get one minister or elder up here, I'm still going to preach the truth. I work for him. I work for the boss. I'm looking for him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But some of you ain't going to hear that. Let me tell you what you're going to hear. Depart from me. I never knew you. Go on, jump right in. Read on, son. 45 again. Who then is a faithful, wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Mm -hmm. Blessed is that servant whom his, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Do you hear this? Jesus said, blessed are you when I come and I find you doing what I told you to do. Somebody may be there, got me all hemmed up and, 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 and threatening my life. And I said, no, I ain't going to change, man. I'm going to keep on preaching. And then they may take one at me. Uh-huh. And then there come the Lord. He says, he looks there and he says, you're blessed. You're doing what I told you. How can you imagine when they were stoning Stephen? You know my brother, Stephen. When they were stoning him there. And he looks up. And while they're stoning him, he sees Jesus. Uh, Brian, he didn't feel any pain while those stones were hitting him in his head, in his chest, in the belly, DJ. Uh, he didn't feel anything. Why? Uh, because you can feel no pain when Christ comes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But when he leaves, come on, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Read, son. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say. Now hold on. This, uh, I told y'all. I just like these little words. Sometimes I read things and I got to stop there. Could you? That, was so, that sounded so good. Did you, could, you, could you read that one more time? Uh huh. Verily. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Now, yeah, read the next one. But and if. Oh, I love those words so good. I, I love them. But and if. But and if. Say it one more time, son. But and oh, if. Now, stop right there. Put, put your index finger there. And so you don't lose your spot. But and if. Oh, uh, some of you done been to the church today. And maybe your service is over. Uh-huh. Now you're here watching Pastor Harmon because they only preach about five minutes till you got your offering and they got out of there. And I'm still here uh, they're begging you for your soul. Uh-huh. A but and if. And maybe while you were there, uh, they said, uh, does anybody want to join the church? Uh, and there you come because he done promised you a new car. Or maybe it's a Jaguar. Uh, or maybe some of you ain't uh, settled for a Ford Escort and you come running up here. Mm -hmm. And the pastor tell you, uh, well, be faithful to the service here and uh, make sure you do this and, and do that. Uh, but listen, you should have something that you should be able to say to this pastor. Uh huh. That's what these two words are very important. Write these down in all capital letters because any pastor that asks you to, to join their church or tell you to follow their Lord, uh, you tell them this. Pastor, uh, you, you preach pretty good today and I don't know much about the Bible and I'm going to join this church here. But and if you change one word out of that book, goodbye, you won't see me again. I'm not going to let you lead me astray. You see, I heard old gray-haired pastor, uh, he kind of too far away, I can't make it there. Uh, but he did put me up on some things. Now listen, pastor, uh, I'm going to come in here and do what I'm supposed to do. But and if you get off and stop following him, I'm going to stop following you. Stick to the words of the book. You can't.
can't stick to it if you don't know it. That's why Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. He wasn't just talking to preachers. He talking to everybody. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Read on, son. We just about done. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. Mm -hmm. Some of you folks just out here preaching now, you don't even believe in God. You just said you tricking the people. Oh, you act like you uh, believe him. You act like you with him. You just, you just getting your money. Mm -hmm. There's a preacher by the name of uh, Leroy Thompson. Oh, he preached about his money. Money, money cometh. Money, money, money. Uh, you may hear God in there one or two times. And hear, you can hear the people in the background. Amen. Go ahead. Ukatasha debuta. Trying to speak in tongues. I can see you following and taking that mark. Mm -hmm. And I told you the mark ain't a stamp on your head. It ain't some numbers here. 666. Six, six. It's what you believe. What you follow. What you worship. It's about worship. I worship him. The only God. There is no other. Read on son. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants. And to eat and to drink with the drunken. Mm -hmm. The Lord of that servant shall come in the, in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him. Now listen to this. When Christ come back and find you ain't doing what you're supposed to have done. Uh, listen, go ahead. Read on something. What are you going to do? And shall cut him asunder mm -hmm. and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. Yeah, he going to cut you asunder and get on over there with the hypocrites. Let me show you the ones that undied already. Well, you know where to go. Right here in the pit. That's where they are. Every hypocrite that done died. Every one of them. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. They right there. They ain't coming back. Mm -hmm. Every uh, homosexual. Every lesbian. Every liar. Every thief that done died. And all the other things that uh, don't obey God. Come on. Well, I'm here already. Right there. If you don't plan on changing, uh, step back a little bit, get you a good running start. Head on right here. Jump right in. Read, son. We done with that chapter? There shall be weeping and oh, gnashing God. of teeth. Listen to this. You think it's going to be a party? No. Jesus says there shall be <laughs> weeping. Oh, God. Oh, I can't take it. I can't take it. God, I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. Forgive me. It's hot down here. Oh, thank God, I can't take it. Before that happens, God got a traffic cop here. Get on back to Revelations and let's finish up. Verse 16. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Mm -hmm. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. Now listen. The seventh angel pours out the last judgment. And he says, it is done. It's reminiscent of when Jesus was on the cross and died for all of you that, uh, that have ever lived. Jesus there on the cross says, it is finished. The Bible already done that. The, the writer there in Hebrews asked you a question, and this, this question should ring with you. How shall you escape if you neglect so great a salvation? How will you get away, my friend? There is no other way. How shall you escape? There is no escape route. There's no rock that you can hide under. How shall you escape? Read, son. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were up upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. Do you hear this? I know we don't have some, some, some bad earthquakes. I know this. Mm-hmm. And that earthquake might have been in Yucatan. Uh, it could have been in Australia. 
Uh huh. And we didn't feel the effects over here in the United States. Uh, but this earthquake right here, mm -hmm. everywhere that you are, any country that you're in, everywhere, uh, you're gonna get, it ain't going to be a, a four over there and maybe a nine and a three over here. No, no, no. They ain't made a Richter scale uh, to measure this. Do you hear me? Uh, you still want to uh, follow your own way? Welcome to your new neighborhood. Read. Verse 19. And the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Do you hear this? Oh, the fierceness of his wrath, of his judgment. Read on, son. I think we got one more and we'll, I'm going to let him go. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great... Now, now, now listen, listen to this, uh, folks. Uh, we, you may have been caught in a hailstorm before. And there's been some that were so bad that uh, the roof of your car had a whole lot of little uh, dents in it and all over your hood. And you had to call State Farm Insurance or American Family uh, or whatever insurance company you call it. And they said, go on, go on, go on, take it over that Andrew Tyler and, and they send us the bill. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's going to happen in your neighborhood, your future neighborhood. Read on, son. And there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven. Uh, uh, it didn't say it fell on your tower. Mm hmm No. Oh, uh, there fell a great hell that fell upon men. Mm-hmm. You remember when in Sodom and Gomorrah when God pronounced judgment on them and, and fire and brimstone fell from the sky? Some of you don't believe that, but look in your history books in that area. They still find it remnants of the hailstones uh, hail of brimstone there. Uh-huh. Go read your history books. Uh-huh. If you got a little money, go over there and see. Don't wait too late, though, before you accept him. Read on, son. Every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blaspheme God because of the, the plague of the hell. For the plague thereof was exceedingly exceeding great. So, uh, the hailstones, the scripture has said, were about the weight of a talent, which is about 60 pounds. 60 pound uh, pieces of hail that is falling on men. Mm -hmm. You'd love to die and think it'll be over. No, no, sir. Uh, this is how your new neighborhood is. I'm telling you, we're on the runway. We're here, and we keep uh, talking about this God we serve, and, and that even if uh, folks do mean to us, we got to do good to them. Yeah, that's us, because that's what our Lord told us to do. Maybe if you treat me so mean, and I can treat, uh, continue to treat, treat you nice, maybe you'll change your way. I, I got a brother-in-law that used to, he used to just torment me. Uh, every time he see me, he just torment me. And I had to go to God and say, God, I'm going to have to do something to this boy. And I told my wife, I, yeah, I don't know how much longer I can take your brother. I'm going to have to do something to him. But God came into my heart. <laughs> like I'm telling you, uh, God went in there and he had to do some scratching surgery on me. He had to take that thing out of me. And when he took it out of me, he put it there in the pit. And he said, don't go back after that. And he sold me up. And listen, he didn't drop one bit of blood. And then my brother-in-law, he ain't there, there to torment me again. And my wife go to stop me. I said, Leah, leave him alone, honey. He's he doing what he's supposed to do. God done prepared me for this. Because uh, God going to win him. So let them alone. Let them talk. And God gave me the strength that whatever they said about me to take it. And I took it. Uh, thank, thank you, boss. Thank you, Lord. I'm so glad. I'm so glad, God, because I didn't see them, but then you opened my eyes uh, so that their eyes can be open. Oh, thank you, Lord. Listen, friend. You may be tormenting 
uh, some Christian who's trying to tell you about safety. Uh, maybe I'm not that traffic cop. Maybe it's another one that's trying to put you on the right road, but, but you won't hear him. And you may not hear me. Maybe you're going to laugh and talk about me today, but I'm going to be back here next week with the same message for you. Some of you may have heard the message and you said, Pastor Harmon, I want to be on the runway with you. I want to stand there. I want people to talk about me for his sake. Not because of something I did, but because of him. I'm willing to stand there for him. I want him to be my boss. I want to obey him. A friend, if that's you, you don't have to be here. Don't waste no time. Tell God you're sorry right now. Oh, but while I'm here, let's go with a prayer in him. Father in heaven, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus, who died for every man's sin. And God, I recognize mine. I'm so sorry, God, that I've lived my life apart from you. Lord, please forgive me. I repent of my sin. I'm so sorry that, oh God, I led my life in a way I shouldn't have. Oh, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior, be my God. I bow down to you, Lord Jesus. Save me. Save me. Make me clean, Lord. Wash me in your precious blood, and I will be clean. Lord, give me knowledge. Give me understanding. Help me to know more about you, Lord. Right now, Jesus, I repent and I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I claim you, Jesus, as mine. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for saving me. I was lost going to a place that I thought well, that I wanted to go, but I didn't know any better. Thank you for your word. Thank you for every man of God that preached the truth to me. Now I can make the right decision because I have a better understanding of your word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for those that heard, that heard your word. Thank you for those that accepted your word. Thank you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer and you were sincere, let me be the first to welcome you into the family of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are now my brother or my sister in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for tuning in to us. All we can offer you is the truth. That's all we have. We can be helpers one to another. Friend, uh, I don't want you or your children or oh, the next generation to go to that neighborhood that we spoke about. No, friend, please get on this runway with me. Let's stand together. Oh, any of you, uh, even the, the, the pastors that have been called out, uh, that invitation is for you. Let's get it right, and then let's walk together and work together. Hallelujah. Before I let you go, let me, allow me to give you where we are with the death clock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my friend. I don't remember. Did anybody write the number down where we were when we started? Because it didn't went up. It didn't shot up. The devil is acting a fool out there. I think we're, we were around 3,500 area. Uh, but nonetheless, here we are. As of midnight to the moment right now, recorded. There have been 4,035 recorded deaths. My friend, if you're listening to me, I'm so glad your name is not in that number. You still have a chance to accept him. And if you accept him as your, as your Lord and Savior, and you died a second later, you've made it in. I'm still here preaching I'm still trying to make it, but you've made it in. Maybe you're there in your hospital bed. Oh, you there that are hearing this message. Oh, hit the share button right now. Maybe there's somebody in the hospital bed that needs this. Maybe there's someone that's sitting at home on the edge of their bed with a gun uh, under their chin ready to take their own life. 
loved in their here. This message of hope. This message of love. This message of salvation. And they changed their way. Share the message, my friend. Hit the share button. Uh, do the watch party so that the word of God gets out. Hallelujah. Let me thank all my friends there on Facebook that took the time to tune in. And to all of those that are here, thank you for coming. Amen. We will shortly load it up to Facebook uh, uh, or YouTube for our friends there. But please share the message. Please take it to heart. God's word is true. And every man is a liar. Don't take my word. Go to the book yourself. Amen. I won't change God's word. He didn't give me permission to. And I will not do it. Hallelujah. Until we see you again, take care of yourselves and in each other. If the Lord's will, we will see you next week at the same time at 11.10 a.m. Until that time, God bless and we love you. Amen. We are...